My name is Julian Burnside. I'm a barrister uh, specialising in commercial litigation in Australia, um, but I do a lot of um, unpaid um, human rights work, including especially refugee work. Australia's attitude to refugees has been uh, mixed and rather interesting. After the Second World War, we received a large number of uh, refugees, especially from Europe, of course. Um, and then the theory was um, captured in the phrase populate or perish. The idea was that Australia, which then had a small population, needed to build its population um, so as to prosper in the world. Uh, then in the, um, uh, in the years, in the late 1970s, after the end of the Vietnam War, the then Australian Prime Minister Malcolm Fraser made a point of welcoming Indo-Chinese refugees to Australia on the basis that we had been part of the problem and we ought to be part of the solution. That worked quite well. But then in the early 1990s, um, for some reason that I don't know, uh, the Australian government started taking a hard line against people who arrived in Australia uninvited in small boats. Um, the, uh, the then Labor government of Paul Keating introduced mandatory detention, which said in substance that if you are uh, in Australia and you were not a citizen and you did not have a visa, then you must be detained and remain in detention until you got a visa or until you were removed from Australia. And that is our mandatory detention system, which still exists. Uh, it's only boat people who are the target of political anxiety in Australia. Now, the irony is that of the people who come by aeroplane, roughly 30% are eventually assessed as refugees who are legally entitled to protection. Of the boat people who come, roughly 95% are ultimately assessed as genuine refugees legally entitled to protection. But it's the boat people who are the subject of political hatred and who are mistreated and who are the subject of the government's attempt to deter them from coming. And the deterrence has taken several forms. First, indefinite detention. Second, uh, um, immediately after the Tampa episode, um, Australia introduced the so-called Pacific Solution by which we uh, take boat people forcibly to Nauru, which is a, a tiny island republic in the central Pacific, or to Manus Island, which is part of Papua New Guinea. In those places, their asylum claims are assessed, and in those places, they suffer quite terribly. Um, and the, the purpose of transporting them there, it seems, is to break their spirit so as to encourage them to return and face their persecutors rather than continue to be mistreated by Australia. Yeah, the, um, the present government has implemented a policy of boat turnbacks. That has taken a couple of forms. Um, first, when boats are seen to be heading in our direction from Indonesia, the Australian Navy or Customs uh, go and intercept those boats, turn them around, and guide them back into uh, Indonesian waters. Um, that has involved us on a number of occasions um, going into Indonesian territorial waters without permission, um, which has caused some diplomatic tension between Australia and, New Z and um, Indonesia. Um, the second thing it has involved is us simply turning boats around and ordering them to go back. But in addition, it has involved us in taking people off uh, refugee boats that seem unseaworthy, putting their passengers into um, seaworthy life rafts and pushing those life rafts back towards Indonesia. It's recently been revealed that on at least one occasion, Australian officials gave money to people smugglers in order to persuade them to take their passengers back to Indonesia. Uh, now, that is interesting because um, in the Australian legislation, um, the criminal offence of people smuggling appears to be uh, 
uh, satisfied in paying those people smugglers to take their passengers back to Indonesia. And it clearly appears to be satisfied in our pushing people back towards Indonesia in Australian provided life rafts. That means that the Australian government is involved in criminal offences against its own law in order to push people back to Indonesia. Um, well, you, it, you can't prosecute the, the government um, for two reasons. First of all, the government is not a legal entity which can be prosecuted for a criminal offence. But um, more particularly, the um, offence of people smuggling, which is created by Section 73 of the Commonwealth Criminal Code, is an offence which can only be prosecuted with the approval of the Attorney General of the Commonwealth. And I suspect that the Attorney General of the Commonwealth is not going to approve of any prosecution against a member of his own party. I think uh, a prosecution of the Commonwealth government or officials of the Commonwealth government is rather less important than the symbolic effect of knowing that the what the government is doing and what it is boasting about uh, involves criminal activities on its part. Um, mind you, getting getting news like that into the mainstream media is not so easy because in Australia, um, about 70% of the press is dominated by Rupert Murdoch, who used to be an Australian but is now an American. Um, and, and the Murdoch press seem to support the activities of the Abbott government. Um, and, and so um, getting news through to the Murdoch press that the Abbott government is involved in criminal offences uh, is not easy. Of course, you would think that would be big news, but not as far as the Murdoch press is concerned. The present uh, Liberal government boasts about the fact that the boats have stopped arriving in Australia, and that is true. They've stopped arriving. Um, it doesn't mean that people have stopped setting out, because we know because we're, we're, we're turning them back. Um, but they've stopped arriving in Australia, um, and that means uh, that the question no longer arises whether people will be allowed to remain in Australia because they don't get here. Um, however, um, historically, and I think the historical perspective is important, historically, the overwhelming majority of boat people who managed to get to Australia have been assessed as refugees and to remain in Australia. That's important because um, um, whereas in Europe, a lot of people arrive as, as boat people or by some other means, and they're not refugees, they're not even claiming to be refugees, but um, they, they, they come because they're looking for a better life. Uh, the journey to Australia from Indonesia is a dangerous one. And, and so people have to be fairly desperate in order to risk their lives trying to get here. And typically, the numbers arriving here by boat have been very small. In fact, the, the medium term average arrival rate of boat people in Australia is between one and 2,000 people per year. The highest number of boat arrivals ever in recent history has been 25,000 people in one year. Now, I think most European countries would reckon that was a pretty small number, um, uh, but but we managed to get excited and hysterical, even with such a small number arriving. I'm by nature optimistic. Uh, if, if I wasn't, well then I think I would have had to cut my throat years ago. Um, I, I'm very sceptical about how long it will take Australia to rediscover its sense of decency and fairness. Um, when I first got involved in this issue, I thought it would take six months. Well, that was 14 years ago. Um, I make myself unpopular in some quarters by speaking publicly, but I think it would be a terrible thing to know the things that I know from direct experience um, and not say anything about it because we are all, after all, human beings. And I think um, the sooner Australians understand that we are mistreating innocent human beings, 
the sooner we might start behaving properly and according to our own vision of ourselves. Because I think most Australians regard themselves as, um, you know, easygoing people who believe in the idea of a fair go and people who think that human rights matter. And yet we're behaving as if human rights don't matter at all.